All right, but 2D vectors was too easy, right? Y'all are, that was a breeze. Y'all are pros at that. This might be a little bit more hard. It's a little bit less comfortable for you is adding three-dimensional vectors. All right, so here we go. 3D vectors, the angles can be given in three different ways, all right? They can be given as coordinate direction angles. Coordinate direction angles. They could be given as spherical angles, spherical, or instead of giving you any angles, they might just give you some dimensions, and from that we can find the angles. All right, so, and it could be given in, in a mixture of these. All right, so let's talk about each of these three individually, then the very end we'll, we'll put them all together. Let's start with coordinate direction angles. They're the easiest. I wouldn't say they're the most common, but they are... Uh, the, the easiest one, the coordinate directional angles are the angles to the coordinate axes, to the x-axis, the positive x, to the positive y, to the positive z. So alpha is the angle between the vector and the positive x-axis. Beta is the angle between the vector and the positive y-axis, and you guessed it, gamma is the angle between the vector and the positive z axis. So something like this. You see that that angle alpha touches the vector and touches the x axis. This angle beta touches the vector and touches the y axis. This angle gamma touches the vector, right? It's the angle between the vector and the coordinate axes. So this one's easy. If you, you know, it's almost like a 2D uh, problem. If you know the angle between them, then you can use adjacent, right? You can use cosine. So Fx would just be magnitude cosine alpha. Fy would be magnitude cosine beta. And Fz would be magnitude cosine gamma, right? All right, that's easy. So you just use the cosines. You just use the cosines to find the components, all right? Now, uh, you can you don't have to be given all three of these angles you can be given two of the angles and you can solve for the third because the magnitudes of the squared cosine so cosine alpha squared plus cosine beta squared plus cosine gamma squared adds up to 1 all right the the cosines squared add up to 1 so uh so you can if you know two of them you can solve for the third. Okay, uh, let, let's look at this. Let's talk about this. Uh, this force could be written as its three components in vector form. I think we've talked a little bit about, you know, I's and J's, um, but the X component is in the I direction, the Y component in the J direction, the Z component in the K direction. So in Cartesian notation, I would say that this force as a vector would be equal to the x component in i plus the y component j plus, right uh, and now we know that fx is f cosine alpha fy is f cosine beta fz is f cosine gamma uh, if we factor out this f then we've got that the force as a vector is equal to the magnitude times this right here, this cosine alpha in the i plus cosine beta in the j plus cosine gamma in the k. And that is really just the direction vector. All right, this right here is really the direction vector. This is a unit vector. So we can call it u. u is cosine alpha i plus cosine beta j plus cosine gamma k. Does it, does it make sense? Do you know what a unit vector is? A unit vector has a magnitude of 1. Does that have a magnitude of 1? Yes. All the cosine squared sum up to 1, right? So yes, it has a magnitude of 1. And um, it is unitless. Yeah, it's unitless. That just tells you the direction. So here we go. We were working all the way to this point. The force as a vector is equal to the force as a magnitude. I'm going to put this absolute value, but it could be positive or negative. That's just telling you 
uh, the magnitude, or I could just draw it without a hat, uh, times the unit vector u. f equals f u. f equals f u. And so that is how you can think about coordinate direction angles. So let me kind of write this in words. So the force written as a Cartesian vector, the force as a Cartesian vector, meaning in I, J, K component form, I, J, K component form, is equal to the magnitude times the unit vector U, which is cosine alpha I plus cosine beta J plus cosine gamma K, where alpha is the angle to the positive X, beta is the angle to the positive uh, Y, and gamma is the angle to the positive K. Uh, this is really three equations. I like to think of this as three equations, right? The I equation, the J equation, and the K equation. I equation, J equation, K equation. So, for quarter direction angles, think F equals F U, where maybe, maybe you know F right here, and you know the magnitude, then you can find U, or maybe you know the magnitude and the U, and you can find F as a vector. Um, you know, there's a number of different ways, but think F equals F U. F equals what? Yes.